Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobacco. The Abbott and Costello program, with the modern rhythm of Will Osborne and his orchestra, Iris Adrian, our singing star Connie Haynes, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who, when caught eating all his mother's preserves to keep his father out of a jam, calmly said, Costello, come here. Do you realize you're almost late for our broadcast? What kept you? Where have you been? Oh, I was all over town today trying to buy myself a new shirt. I had a terrible time. Well, naturally. You know there's a shortage of material. You said it. I finally had to buy one of those shirts made out of onion skins. And did that shirt embarrass me? Oh, now, come. How could an onion skin shirt embarrass you? Well, I walked into the Brown Derby restaurant, and my shirt tail jumped out and waved at the hamburgers. <laughs> My shirt even chased the hamburgers into the icebox. Wait a minute. Your shirt ran into the icebox? What happened? That's all. Now my tail is told. They all... <laughs> Doc, never mind that, Costello. Costello, you mean you kept me waiting here all this time while you were out buying a shirt? Oh, yeah, but I had to get one. I met a wonderful girl today, Abbott. You did? Her name is Gertrude Gigglewater. Oh. She's got a swell job, too, Abbott. What does she do? She scrubs the floors in the house on 92nd Street. Uh, you mean you've got a date with her? Yeah, you ought to see her. Beautiful. She's Betty Grable, Lana Turner, Lauren Bacall, all rolled into one. She is? Yeah, but the only trouble is when I unroll her... She looks like Boris Karloff. <laughs> what are you doing with another girl, Costello? <laughs> well, what about your girlfriend? Lean against her. I had a fight with her. No. Yes. Lena sent me to a drugstore last night to get some makeup, but I made a mistake and got her a bottle of leg makeup. Leg makeup? Yep. Yep. When she put it on her face, she got a run in her neck. <laughs> Boy, is she mad at me. I uh, don't blame her. You mean your love boat sprung a leak? Sprung a leak. The whole bottom fell out. Costello, I think Lena knows, uh, knows about this girlfriend of yours. Yeah, she left this note for you. Here, you'd better read it. Okay. Oh, look. Dear Lewis. Look how she spells Lewis. L-O-U-S-E. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Isn't that louse? You're, you're reading right. Maybe it's Luzé, French, you know. How do you spell Luzé? Uh, L-O-U-S-E. It still spells Louse, don't it? <laughs> read Lena's letter, please. Okay, go ahead. I'll read it. Go ahead. I hear you are running along with another girl. I am coming coming over here, and I'm going to shoot you so full of holes, you can button your vest from any angle. <laughs> Lena wouldn't shoot at me. She's a college girl. She told me she came from Penn State. <laughs> She must have meant state pen. <laughs> you dummy, that was... <laughs> that was just a car backfiring. Then help me down off this channel there. <laughs> Costello, if I were you, I'd get out of town right away. Is there any place you can go where Alina can't find you? Yes. My Uncle Artie Stebbins, he has a monkey ranch. He raises apes. Your uncle raises apes? Yes, it's right on his stationery here. Stebbins... Apiary. Apiary? Mm-hmm. Why, an open apiary is a place where they raise bees. Have you ever seen your uncle's bees? Oh, sure. He's got a whole herd of bees. No, 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 you dummy. It isn't herd of bees. It's swarm. It's what? It's swarm. Why don't you take your coat off? No. <laughs> Look, Costello. You've been out to your uncle's farm. Haven't you ever seen his hives? Have I ever seen what? Have you ever seen your uncle's hives? No, every time I've seen him, he had his clothes on. <laughs> Listen, Costello, I've been to your uncle's ranch, and I saw his hives. You saw his hives? Yes. Shame on that! What's the matter? What's the matter with that? Bad boy, yeah! What are you... Th- now, wait a minute. Be careful with your remarks. How dare you peep into my uncle's window and look at his hive? I didn't peek in any window. Then you looked over the transom. Uh, listen, you dope. Your uncle was in the house and his hives were in the backyard. He was in the house and his hives were in the backyard? Certainly. How does he scratch him with a long-handled rake? No. <laughs> Talk sense, Costello. I'm talking about your uncle's beehives. Haven't you ever tasted his orange blossom honey? No, I haven't, sweetheart. I... <laughs> Costello, you don't even know where... You're cute. Never mind that. You don't even know where honey comes from. That's ridiculous. A cat... 
Who don't? You don't. My cat has honey. Now, that's ridiculous. My cat doesn't have any honey. Then why does mine stay out all night? Yeah, <laughs> Bees make the honey. Haven't you ever seen the bees in my garden gathering nectar? Gathering what? Nectar in the flowers. You nectar in the flowers. <laughs> you better be careful, Abbott. I nectar a girl once in the flowers, and her boyfriend caught me and fractured me in the hollyhocks. Uh, right the... down to the roots. All right. Will you please pay attention? I'm trying to tell you where the honey comes from. Haven't you ever seen the bees buzzing around my poppies? Your poppies what? My poppies in the garden. Let them stay in the garden. Who cares? No, I'm talking about flowers. Uh, didn't you know I have an oriental poppy? No, sir. I thought he was an American. <laughs> Costello, when I'm talking about a poppy, I'm not talking about a man. Shame on you. Telling me your poppy ain't a man. Listen, the poppy I'm talking about is uh, the one uh, in the backyard, in the bed. Oh, why don't you sleep in the house? Is he afraid of your, your mommy? <laughs> now, nah, look, look, look. I'm talking about my wife's flowers bed. Ha- haven't you ever noticed my wife's petunias? Can I have that again? I... <laughs> I say, haven't you ever noticed my wife's petunias? Ah, oh, Costello, what could be nicer than beautiful flowers on the table? Meat and potatoes? I hey, look, why do I waste time with you? I'm trying to tell you that the bees gather honey from the flowers and they take it to the hives and put it in their comb. They put the honey in their comb? That's right. Doesn't that make their hair sticky? <laughs> Costello, there's only one way to handle a dummy like you. I'm going to take you out to your uncle's ranch and show you how the bees operate. You're not going to get me near any of those bees. What if one of them should back up and sting me? What do you care about little bee stings? All you have to do is slap a little mud on it, and the stingers come out. All I do is slap a little mud on it, and the stinger comes right out? That's right. Who's going to hold the bee while I slap the mud on him? Oh, what a... <laughs> And now let's take a moment to go back 2,500 years or so to the wise old philosopher who said, Gracias ine is hirotere ton logan. Actions speak louder than words. The same man, as it happens, who also said... Peter Callistos Didascalios S.T. Experience is the best teacher. That man was Aesop, whose fables have been a bestseller for two dozen generations. Can you think of a modern application of those two proverbs? Well, how about this? Experience is the best teacher. During the cigarette shortage, when smokers had to take what they could get, they tried more different brands of cigarettes than they'd normally sample in a lifetime. And that experience taught them, better than any claims that the blend of costlier tobaccos in camels is unique. And that's proved by the second proverb. Actions speak louder than words. For today, more people ask for camels than ever before. Yes, more smokers than ever before, more experienced than ever before, proved by their actions that camels are the choice of experience. C-A-M-E-L-S The choice of experience. More people want camels than ever before. And now Camel presents Will Osborne and the orchestra. Will sings the current swing favorite, waiting for that train to come in. My gal to come home I've counted every minute Of each live long day Been so melancholy Since she went away I've shed a million teardrops or more Waiting for the one I adore I'm waiting in the depot By the railroad track Looking for the choo-choo train To bring her back Waiting for my life to begin Waiting for the train to come in Waiting, waiting for the train to come in Well, here we are at your Uncle Artie Stebbins' ranch Yeah, and am I happy? I got out of town before my girlfriend got a hold of me Ha, 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 
Get away from her. Tell me, Costello, why is Lena so mad at you? Well, yesterday she asked me to give her cat a saucer of milk. I took the milk out of the wrong can, and it turned out to be gasoline. You fed the cat gasoline? What happened? It changed its purr to a pup pup. <laughs> oh, come on, Costello. Let's see if your uncle is home. Hey, look out for that loose board on the porch. <laughs> Ow! Ow! That board flew up and hit me in the face. It's even more embarrassing on the way out. I... <laughs> Go ahead, knock on the door. What do you want? I want to see my uncle, Artie Stebbins. Well, hereafter, go around to the back stoop. 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 Stoop? Step. <laughs> and when you get up to the back step. 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 Stoop. <laughs> One stoop at a time. Okay, go ahead. I'm glad you fellas dropped around, eh? Will you help me carry this ladder? I gotta get up on the roof. You've gotta get up on the roof? What for? I'm going to have one on the house. <laughs> hey, what's going on out there? Why, well, it's my little nephew, Louis Costello, and Bud Abbott. Hello, Mr. Stebbins. Hello, Mr. Stebbins. How are you? Come right in, boys. I was just going to sit down and eat. What was that? I always have a couple of shots before dinner. <laughs> I like to get off a good joke. Well, get off that one before it hatches. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Stebbins, I brought Costello out here to hide him from his girlfriend. Now, I hope you can put us up. Do you have a nice room with a bath? Not out here. All we have is a room and a path. <laughs> I think I'd better wash my hands before I sit down to eat. Get away from that cow. Is that a cow? I thought it was funny. All that plumbing and no sink. <laughs> Costello, you dummy. Haven't you ever seen a cow before? Are you kidding? I worked once on a dude ranch. It was so classy that even the cows wore slacks. The cows wore slacks? How did you milk them? I was a pickpocket. <laughs> All right, you later. Don't cackle over it. <laughs> Look, boys, if you're going to stay out here at my ranch, you better get acquainted. Here comes my foreman, Tex Melonhead. Tex, meet Lou Costello, my nephew, and his friend, Bud Abbott. Hi, boys. All right, everybody works on this ranch. Come on, let's get busy. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't come out here to work. I haven't got the time. Oh, you haven't got the time, huh? Get a load of this Costello. He works in pictures. He's on the radio. He makes thousands of dollars a week, and I got to go out and buy a watch to tell wait him a minute, the Wait time. a minute, Look, Melonhead. I didn't ask you to go out and buy me a watch. Oh. You don't have to buy me a watch. You want me to go out and steal one, huh? Go on. I ask you to go out and steal tell one. Him, tell him. That's how I make my living. I'm not a foreman on the ranch. Say it. I'm a crook. I steal. Who's... Look, Melonhead, you never stole anything in your life. Oh, I spent 15 years in Alcatraz for nothing, huh? Go <laughs> well, on, while you're at it, tell everybody that I shot a cashier in the bank. Oh, I shot a guy. Start a rumor. I right? didn't start nothing. Say, I shot a man. Go Why ahead. Why should I say you shot a guy? I swear, Melonhead, you never shot the cashier. I missed him, huh? I was kidding. <laughs> I can't shoot straight. How do you like that? Now, what did I say? What did you say? Yeah. Get a load of him. Doesn't even know what he's saying, and he takes up my time. I should be doing my work, and you keep me standing here. Look, Melonhead, I don't want you to stand here. Go take a walk. Oh, wear out my boots, huh? Okay, then take a ride. Take a bus. Take a streetcar. Go on, take a taxi. What's wrong with a train? I got nothing against trains. You wouldn't mention trains, huh? Why should I talk about trains? Now he's against the railroad. Stop the train. No more trains. Of course, to show you, my brother was out of work for 11 years. This morning, he got a little job on the railroad, a brakeman. Now, Costello wants to stop all the trains just to throw my brother out of work. <laughs> Who said anything about your brother not working, Melonhead? Let your brother work. Let him work 365 days a year. Oh, he shouldn't even have one day off. <laughs> Son, he don't have to work at all. Now you want to make a bum out of him. Who wants to make a bum out of him? A poor man works and he can't even have one day off. Let him take a day off. Go ahead. Let him take Thanksgiving Day off. Thanksgiving Day. The only day he gets up or th double overtime, he lays him off. <laughs> when you forget about your brother... Fine thing. The only brother I got, he wants me to forget him. My brother, the man who introduced me to Marie, my darling little wife. Oh, now you're dragging my wife into the argument. I didn't even mention your wife, Melanie. Oh, you wouldn't mention her. My wife isn't good enough for you to talk about, huh? <laughs> Go on. Tell him. Tell him my wife is a miserable, ugly old battle axe. Melonhead, I've seen your wife. Your wife is charming. She's lovable. Very affectionate. Oh, so you're the guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am not Come the on, guy. Come on, take off your coat. 
Joe, fight like a man. Okay, Mountain you got me good and mad now. <laughs> you want to fight, huh? Yes. Well, I'll fight you. You meet me at the pool room at 8 o'clock. I'll trade punches with you. And furthermore, to show you I'm not afraid of you, Melonhead, I'll let you take the first punch. In the alley? No, on the punch board. Five cents a chance. <laughs> Lovely Connie Haynes. That's for me. I saw you standing in the sun, and you were something to see. I know what I like, and I like what I saw. I said to myself, that's for me. A lovely morning, I remarked, and you were quick to agree. You wanted to walk, and I nodded my head. I breathlessly said, that's for me. I left you standing under There's nothing for me but the dream in my heart And the dream in my heart That's for you Oh, my darling, that's for you I left you standing Day's adventures are through There's nothing for me But the dream in my heart The dream in my heart That's for you Oh, my darling I am saying that's for you Oh, my darling By a very sweet girl. Thank you, Ken, for a very sweet compliment. Oh, and thanks for the lovely flowers you sent. I suppose they prove you really mean the nice things you say, huh? Indeed they do, Connie. As Issa put it, actions speak louder than words. That's why the actions of today's smokers mean so much. For a few months ago, when smokers had to take what they could get, most civilians tried more different brands of cigarettes than they'd usually buy in a lifetime. But now that smokers can choose their cigarettes again, well, their actions prove that they found no substitute for the fine, rich flavor and cool, soothing mildness of Camel's costlier tobaccos. More smokers today are asking for Camel's than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. Yes, Camel's, the choice of experience. Well, Costello... This is certainly the life. Isn't it wonderful up here at your Uncle Artie Stebbins Ranch? Oh, Abbott, what a climate. It is. Where else can you jump out of bed in the morning and fill your lungs with that fresh California fog? Well, I... I... (laughs) I'd feel good, Lou. I'd really feel good if it wasn't for one thing. I, I had a terrible nightmare about a flood. All night long, I was gasping and fighting for my life against a raging torrent of water. All around me, there was nothing but water, water, water. That was no dream, Abbott. It wasn't? No, the stopper come out of your hot water bottle. Right. <laughs> hey, Costello, look out the window. There's your Uncle Artie Stebbins down there feeding the pig. Uh, let's get out and watch him. Not me, Abbott. Those pigs are vicious. Vicious? Yes, sir. I saw a bunch of little pigs chasing a big pig around the pen. They finally threw him on the ground and tried to chew all the buttons off his vest. <laughs> you talk sense, Costello? Tell me something, Abbott. What? Do little pigs have little babies? Oh, of course they have little babies. That's funny. I always thought they had little pigs. I, all right. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Costello? Why all this silly talk? Oh, I guess it's because I got away from Lena Gessler. <laughs> and she can't find me way up here at my uncle's ranch. How can you talk that way against Lena? I think she's different. She has such a cute little button nose. Yes, but why does it have the button on her lower lip? <laughs> Say, Costello... 
Who's that getting out of that car? That's my old friend, Scotty Brown. Get a load of him, Abbott. He's all dressed up in a cowboy outfit. Hiya, Lenny. Hi, Hiya, Scotty. Hiya, Scotty. Hiya, Scotty. Hiya, Scotty. Get along, little doggy. Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, old boy, wh- what are you doing up here at the Stebbins Ranch? Well, I heard you laddies were up here, and I came for a horseback ride. Uh, how do you like these nice woolly chaps I'm wearing? I made them myself. Woolly chaps? Looks like a suit of long underwear. Well, confidentially it is. I took a comb and roughed up the fuzz. <laughs> Turn around, Scotty, and let's see the rest of your outfit. Come on. Okay. Hey. Pretty snazzy, eh, ladies? Hey, wait a minute, Scotty. You've only got one spur. Did you lose the other one? No, I only bought one. If you spur one side of the horse, the other side has got to go, too. <laughs> Costello, I brought a friend of yours up in my car. Here she comes now. There you are, you storage tank for the fat salvation. Costello, it's Lena. <laughs> Run for the hills and hide the <laughs> Costello, what's this I hear about you running around with another girl named Gertrude Gigglewater? Are you the kind that has to have a lot of women in your life? No, I like a lot of life in my women. <laughs> After all, Lena, I'm the kind of fellow that has to have excitement. I have to live. Why? Lena, can I help it if women are crazy about me? It must be the Van Johnson in me. How dare you compare yourself with Van Johnson? I look exactly like him. Where? Between the fingers. Oh. <laughs> Costello. <laughs> Costello, please. Why, why don't you tell Lena that you've been a bad boy and throw yourself on her mercy? Yeah, she'll throw me right back on mine. I'll say I would, you dehydrated Andy Devine. I hear you even held this girl's hand. Oh, that was kid stuff. And you also put your arms around her. That was just kid stuff. Then you kissed her. Today, I am a man. (laughs) Well, I'll fix you, Costello. I'm going to take your engagement ring off my finger and throw it away. Lena, Lena, please don't throw that diamond ring on the ground. Why not? Because you'll have seven years' bad luck. (laughs) Look, Costello, I'm not going to waste any more time on you. I brought my cousin, Cliff Nazaro, out here from Brooklyn. Come here, Cliff. This is the puffed-up angleworm that trifled with my affection. Oh, Oh, Costello. You're the guy that's been kicking my cousin Lena around. Dragging her all the way out here from Brooklyn and then taking a... making a fool out of her. Do you realize that you've broken this little girl's little fabric separate for her? And you you took her tender little cap and rotor fractures piece and put her right to the barber's little piece. And you tore it to pieces, and finally you tramped all over the cabin reason to put the kind of reserve hip and give a I have done a lot of things in my life, but I never did that. <laughs> Don't try to kid me, Costello. I was in the living room the night you took Lena in your arms, and you put a little fat race of sober right up under me. <laughs> and not only did you cabin barbers with the bed, but you put your cap and frame yourself with them. Maybe four percent of a cap and car instead of putting about her head. Go on, mean... tell him, Cliffy. You took the words right out of my mouth. You ought to be glad to get rid of them. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Costello? Why do you take everything this man says and twist it? Twist it? I can't even untwist it. <laughs> what are you talking about, Costello? After all, I just told you I saw you take Lena, and you put your arm around her little cap and first, then you cover her Not the man, but you put the cap and rapaces over the little orbit first, and then all of a sudden, you're framing up a level of three, it was in Barber, and that's it. Plain, unvarnished truth. Unvarnished? You sound like you're shellac. <laughs> there you go, insulting the man. I can't understand you, Costello. You can't understand me? Well, listen to him. Now, where do we go? Listen here. Do you realize that I got up out of a sick bed to come out here? There I was lying there with a cabin robe in front of a celebrant. And on top of it... I had a severe case of valid real murder hidden. Why didn't you try penis sliding fang and see Listen to that sweet Cliffy, trying to confuse you with double talk. <laughs> Costello, don't you know the king's English? Yes, and I'd like to be talking to him right now. <laughs> Listen, Lena, this Costello is no good. I'm going to get you a lawyer and we'll sue him for crappling, back to three rupees, hold a crap of some kind of board of the branch, I'll leave a little frame and rubber cover for us, I'll say. And I'll do it, too. And Costello, he means every word of it. Uh, look, Costello, I realize that I... that I lost my head. And if you'll just apologize to Lena, I'm willing to forgive you because, as Benjamin Franklin said, he who links his force with the red with the appendix pedestal shall always be the fat with the with the mickey... Spack! 
<laughs> Gee, that's what an education will do for you. Well, Costello, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry for what I did. I've been a fool. A cad, especially to you and Lena. And there's only one thing I can do to redeem myself. I'm going right out to the corner of Hollywood and Vine. I'm going to climb up on a soapbox in front of all my friends, in front of the whole public. I'm going to stand there and I'm going to ruble punk and flang. Oh, no, not that. Anything but that. Oh, let me out of here. Anthony Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the man who won the victory. Tonight, we salute the 83rd Ohio Division, gallant veterans of Italy, France, Dusseldorf, and Magdeburg. In your honor, men of the Ohio Division, the makers of camels are sending to your fellow servicemen overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the two camel radio shows thus honors the different units of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard, a total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen next Thursday when Camel again presents Abbott and Costello. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the war has been over for more than three months now, but you can't turn off the effects of a world war simply by saying it's over. Some of those effects are still with us. Wounded veterans who need medical care, crippled veterans who need artificial limbs. Handicapped veterans who need special training to help them take useful places in the country they fought for. You're right, Ken. And those men are going to be taken care of whether any of us buy bonds or not. This country isn't going to let our boys down. Yes, Lou. But I know that every American wants to help. And the purchase of victory bonds can do just that. And don't forget, folks. Those bonds are the world's safest investment. An investment that will pay you back $4 for every three you put in. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. And remember... Buy your victory bonds at your favorite movie theater. Good night to everybody in Patterson, New Jersey. Good night, friends. Congratulations, Mayor Fury. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. Long before the coming of the white man. Uh, smoke peace pipe, great warrior. The American Indian smoke peace pipes. Today, any pipe is a peace pipe with Prince Albert in the bowl. For Prince Albert is as peacefully cool and stingless as it is flavorful, fragrant, and mild. A special no-bite treatment gets rid of parch and tongue bite. Crimp cut for slow, lazy burning, cooler burning. Yes, so mild and cool that more pipe smokers smoke it than any other tobacco in the world. That's Prince Albert. Man, it's made for you. Try it soon. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Ole Opry, coast to coast on NBC. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at the very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>